a new reality show that's about to hit the airwaves. So here's what it's called, All My Babies Mamas. Mm -hmm. And it's in development for the Oxygen Network. So take a look at it. So you guys, he might be known as a rapper, but here in Atlanta, he's known for having 11 kids and 10 baby mamas. Gangsta. My name is Ikria. They say I'm the first lady. I'm the baby mama with the most power because I control Charlotte's finances. So far, 30,000 people have signed a petition to stop the network from airing this upcoming show because they believe that it's offensive and humiliating to children. I don't understand it. I really don't get it. Why do we insist on pretending that we don't know where the problem lies with a crazy circumstance like this? Why do we ignore the elephant in the room, or in this case, the herd of elephants in the room, and say not a word against these irresponsible mothers? For some reason, with cases similar to this, the issue always seems to be about the man and his ability to afford the children. He is a wallet with no name, necessarily, and no other input into events other than being a bad man. I don't find this funny. I don't think this is good for the kids. It's I don't think this is funny. good for the women involved. I don't think, what's so funny about this? What's funny is, first of all, it's a one-hour show, and it shows somebody's life. He takes care of his children. You're just on the show spending an hour talking about how there was Obamacare and how we're just a, a society depending on, on the government. He takes care of his children. Right. This sends the wrong message all to young kids. children. She's single mothers are saying, my struggle should not be packaged for entertainment value that as the press release again from this media company said that our young female diverse audience can tweet and gossip about. He takes care of his family. He takes care of his kids. I don't, kids. But he takes care of them. He's not optimal, which you were just talking about. Women have complete choice and control of whether they have children and with whom they have children. Take a look at some abortion figures to see just how much control women have, and then add that to the number of women on the pill. Why is nobody in the news calling out these women for their total responsibility for the situation? It's like the great unsaid, she who must not be named, the empowered female, the toxic, irresponsible, feckless, society-destroying, cancerous piece of trash, otherwise known as a baby mama. I liken women deciding to have children with a man to a bank deciding to give a man a loan. The man can ask, but it's entirely up to the bank if they say yes or no. Just imagine if these women were bank managers handing out loans to some guy. He's already maxed out his credit with a loan from the first bank, and the other nine banks know it. Yet when he comes calling, they give him loans anyway. If this happened, every single one of those nine bank managers would be sacked for gross negligence. But when it's women dispensing children with no thought whatsoever, we don't even mention them as the prime causes of the problem, except to say that somehow the presentation of the truth is demeaning to women. It's people making deplorable, ridiculous, irresponsible decisions. They wanted to send this media company, wanted to send these very dangerous messages to young women. This sends the wrong message to children, and it's also very degrading to women. No, the behavior of these women is what's demeaning to women, not a TV show about it. The behavior of women and men in refusing to condemn the irresponsible mothers is far more demeaning to women. It seems that most groups are defined by their worst members, be it the Irish with drunkenness, blacks with violence, and of course, men with everything negative you can think of. The prime exception to this rule seems to be women. They wear halos no matter what they do. Even this piece of work, this girl, whose toxicity has not even reached maturity, is described as petite in some vain attempt to reduce the severity of her behavior. It's like a desperate ploy to deny our own eyes and proclaim women to be above reproach. Or where we can't deny it, then we mitigate it by describing her as petite or harmless. And we can be fairly confident that when this petite girl grows up and becomes a petite woman who initiates domestic violence, it will be the man that please come to arrest. They'll take one look at her petite, bloodied fists and arrest him for assaulting her knuckles with his face. Women seem to be completely fine with being presented as having no agency in producing children for a man whom they knew had children with other women like they're simply vessels with no control or standards of behavior, an object to which things just happen, wandering around like empty-headed imbeciles with no power of thought, not the slightest concern for their children's environment, not a care for anything except possibly some rap money. They are the innocents and all the attention is on the feckless father and whether he can afford child support. And Obama tells us that a woman can do anything a man can do and do it better and do it in heels. And we want 40% of company directors to be women. And we need more women in government. 
Should we presume that the women we apparently need to occupy those positions are some other breed of woman who does have control of her own behaviour and is not a leaf in the wind? Where are these women? Because they're certainly not amongst the powerless female victims we're presented with in our media at saturation levels. And they're certainly not amongst any group of women protesting about being presented as creatures with less responsibility than children because these groups don't exist.